and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a full wear test, first impression, review, and comparison on the brand new L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Powder Foundation. This has been going crazy on the internet on TikTok. If you have TikTok, people are raving about this and I am a powder foundation lover. I absolutely adore my MAC Studio Fix powder. So I figured we could do a full wear test on this and then do a comparison with the MAC Studio Fix. So we are going to be doing a full split down the middle testing the new L'Oreal foundation against the MAC Studio Fix. So if you are interested in seeing my review on the new one as well as a full day wear test, then just keep on watching. We are going to read the product claims first to see what we are basing our judgment of the foundation on. So as I said, this is the brand new L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour wear in a powder foundation, a waterproof matte finish. This is a extension of their L'Oreal 24 hour infallible foundation, which I do have and love. This is more of a light coverage though. So I believe the new powder is a full coverage, which is interesting. This retails in Canada for $19.99. I thankfully got mine on sale for $14.99 at Shoppers Drug Mart. I was very happy to get it on sale in my shade, which is Porcelain 10 is the shade that I picked out. I will say the shade range, at least at Shoppers Drug Mart, is abysmal. There was four shades available and they were pretty much all light. So I don't like seeing that at all. I will look up the L'Oreal site and like Ulta and see other retailers what shades they are offering. But the shades that they had available at the shoppers was like very sad to see. There was only four shades there, which I just hate that so many people have to miss out and feel excluded from a launch that is so hyped, especially to go into store and see that there isn't a shade that even slightly would work for most people is very unfortunate. So this powder covers like a liquid foundation and mattifies like a powder. It provides full coverage with a natural matte finish. The end result will blur even and smooth skin without it looking cakey. Weightless, creamy texture fuses with skin upon application. Color remains true throughout the day without drying or fading. Matte finish for up to 24 hours, suitable for all skin types, oily and acne prone skin. Acne prone skin. <laughs> The formula is waterproof, sweat resistant, heat resistant, and transfer proof. Those are huge claims, especially with the world we're living in right now. I am going to work today, so I will be wearing a mask, a regular fabric mask, and then a face shield as well on and off all day. So we will get a good wear test out of this. So basically it claims to be the best foundation ever, <laughs> which is why TikTok, etc. is going so crazy over the foundation. Um, and right now, it has 245 reviews on the shopper site so it has an overall response of 4.6 stars out of 5 which is amazing and then in terms of product amount pricing in comparison with the studio fix the l'oreal infallible is 19.99 canadian as i said you get 0.3 three one ounces of product in here. And then the MAC Studio Fix is $38 on the MAC website and you get 0 0.52 ounces in here. So you do get a little bit more product in the MAC for a little bit more of an expensive price. Um, a lot more, I guess, of an expensive price, but to me, the L'Oreal Infallible is still a very, very expensive product for the drugstore. Um, so I was very happy that I purchased mine on sale. That's probably the only time I could justify doing that unless I really do like this. Here we have the MAC Studio Fix, which you can tell is slightly lighter and then a little more neutral, whereas the L'Oreal is probably a half shade darker and a little bit more yellow. And again, this is NC15 versus porcelain number 10. I have already gone ahead with my cleanser and moisturizer about like 20 minutes ago. So now I'm going to go in and prep my skin with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is my favorite primer to use when I'm testing out a new foundation because it doesn't alter my skin in any way. It doesn't smooth. It doesn't blur. It's not going to impact the way a foundation really looks or performs. It's just going to add extra moisture to my skin, which I personally need or prefer because I have incredibly dry skin. So I'm just going in with a decent amount of this because I have super dry skin. 
um, to make sure that we are nice and prepped beforehand. This does leave a tiny, tiny bit of a tacky finish to it. Not anything tacky like the Milk Gripping Primer. It's like a super, super slight tackiness. And I did think about adding like concealer or a little bit of foundation underneath, but I really do want to see how the powders perform just on their own, especially because I have a lot of breakouts right now. So I thought that would just be interesting to compare them fully on their own. So I'm going to do my MAC Studio Fix on the side of my face that doesn't have a lot of problems because I just know it'll be fine there and I don't really need to test the coverage because I know what it's like, you know? And then I'm going to do my infallible on the side of my face that has a ton of breakouts. All right, so we're gonna start out with my MAC Studio Fix, but I am going to use this little applicator for both of the foundations, just so that it's super even. I'm gonna use one on one side and one on the other. All right, so I've smeared a good amount in there, and I'm just going to wipe it on like so. That's kind of how I've seen the people, people on TikTok doing it. Um, and you can see right away how crazy good that coverage is. So I'm just gonna go ahead from there and pat it in. I will also say that pretty much everyone that I've seen applying this foundation has pretty flawless skin. So I thought that it would be very interesting to try it on myself, who is very dry, acne prone, somewhat textured skin from the acne, because typically powders aren't going to apply as well on someone with textured skin or dry skin or acne. So I figured I was the perfect test subject for this one. Not that I'm trying to dupe it in any way because I don't think I'll ever not purchase the MAC Studio Fix. I just love it so much, but I just wanted to see how they compare. That there is how I'm going to leave the MAC Studio Fix side for now. I think it looks really nice, very smooth, a little bit airbrush. The coverage is good. Granted, I don't need that much coverage on this side, but I think it looks really good. So now let's go ahead and go in with the L'Oreal Fresh Wear. I'm nervous about this, mostly for the shade, to be honest. I'm scared it's gonna be really, really yellow on me. All right, so this is how it's looking. I'm so nervous. Definitely looks pretty yellow. Not blending out as well as the MAC Studio Fix. You saw with the MAC one, I did the same thing. Just kind of swiped it down and then patted it in to kind of blur and buff it into the skin. But it's kind of sitting where I first applied it. Really don't like how it's looking so far. It's definitely clinging to where I first applied it really, really badly. And it's not smoothing out like the MAC side did. So I'm going to switch over to a brush and see if we can like buff and distribute a little bit better with the brush. And for the brush, I grabbed my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush, which is a really nice one to use for powder foundations. I'm liking it a lot more with the brush used to apply. I think that is definitely the move with this one. I am still seeing a little bit where the foundation very first stuck, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of that. Um, um, so I'm just gonna move on to the forehead. I've now gone ahead and buffed in the foundation on both sides how I feel like looks best. You can't really tell a shade difference between the two, which is interesting because the L'Oreal is definitely more obviously yellow, warm toned than the MAC in the pan. But on the skin, you can't really tell a shade difference between the two. Um, if you do purchase this foundation and you also have the e.l.f. e.l.f ultimate blending sponge. I definitely think it's the best way to apply this. It looks so, so much nicer with it applied with the brush versus the sponge. So highly recommend just using a brush to buff it in. I think it looks really nice considering I have so much acne here as well. I think it covered pretty well for not using like any foundation or concealer. This would be amazing on top of a light coverage, like tinted moisturizer or concealer just to add more coverage. I think that looks pretty good for just having a powder foundation. So this is the side with the MAC Studio Fix and this is the side with the L'Oreal Infallible. So you guys let me know what you think. So far I think they look very very similar on the face. I think both sides look pretty nice. I definitely had to apply a little bit more of the L'Oreal for coverage purposes 
on my spots but I think we're looking pretty good on both sides so far I'm definitely impressed with the L'Oreal with a brush didn't like it with the sponge but I think it's looking pretty good so I'm going to go hop off camera I'm going to do very light application on the rest of my makeup uh, just like brows mascara lip gloss or something and I will be back in a second to update on how the powder looks before we get into the full wear test so I will be back I think that both foundations are looking really, really good. I think they look very similar on the skin. Obviously, my MAC side looks a little bit better just because I don't have breakouts and irritation over there. So it looks a little bit better, a little more flawless and smooth. But for a powder foundation, I think the coverage on this side is really, really nice, even though I do have all of the breakouts there. But for the everyday person who doesn't have breakouts, or even if you do and you don't want like full, full coverage, this is really nice, especially with masks on right now. Like my mask is gonna cover all this. So I'm gonna look pretty like flawless and put together as is. We are going to go ahead and do the wear test, see how it wears throughout the day under all of the masks and outside in the cold. It's freezing and snowing right now a ton. It is currently 11.30. I'll probably leave this on until like six or seven tonight, maybe even longer. So I will talk to you guys in a few hours or probably like a lot of hours later after my shift and we will see how the makeup is looking at that point in time. But as of now, I am very impressed. I am back checking in with you guys. It has been hours and hours. It is now 9.41 at night. I went to work, came home, ate, watched the new to all the boys I loved, um, ate a lot of candy in my bed and here we are. I just touched up my lip gloss, but nothing else has been touched up. As I said, I was at work and at work I have to wear a full face mask and a face shield on and off. So I do have a few lines on my forehead, so keep that in mind. But what do we think? I am very impressed with how both products have held up throughout the day. I have some product that's been removed mainly around my nose area, but we don't have any shine. I don't think the product transferred at all. I think using this as I personally would with like a concealer or a little bit of tinted moisturizer underneath and then the powder, I think that would give me the coverage that I personally want. But for you guys, I just wanted to show what it can look like without any concealer at all. Just having this as the like foundation complexion product. So I think that this definitely, definitely is a good product. I think it deserves the hype that it's getting. I think the coverage is well deserved, especially if you have flawless skin. This will make you look very flawless. I have very dry skin. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Have you tried this? Are you interested in trying it? Do you think that it's worth the money? What are your thoughts overall? Let me know. I would definitely love to chat with you guys about the product down below in the comments. I love gauging your opinions on products. And if you did find this video helpful or you found it interesting or you just had a good time while watching, definitely do be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe if you aren't already. Um, the video before this was a foundation review as well, the new Essence foundation, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And I will have a lot more new at the drugstore videos in the next few weeks. So definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications if you want to do so as well to be notified when I post new videos. And as always, I hope that you guys either have or had an absolutely awesome day and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.